Today, we're going to continue our discussion on financial statements and ratio analysis. Okay, I have provided <clears throat> a, uh, the income statement and the balance sheet of uh, this company. I forgot, I failed to write the name of this company. Let's just call this company XYZ, XYZ company. Okay, so we're given this uh, financial statements of this company XYZ. And we're given the 2021, 2020, and 2019 uh, financial statements. So we have the income statement. We have the balance sheet, assets, and liabilities. Uh, part of the uh, exercise of this uh, template of this worksheet is for you to construct the <clears throat> statement of cash flows for. Okay, kindly make this uh, 2021. I'm sorry about this. It's 2021. Okay, so working paper for the statement of cash flows for 2021. If you watch the video, guys, that I posted, you'll be able to uh, work on this. In fact, uh, as you know, the short quiz that I gave you is based on the creation of the statement of cash flows. Okay, then down below, we're asked to compute for, uh, here on top, we are, we're asked to compute for the common size statement and the horizontal analysis. Down below, we're asked to compute for the measures that we learned computing last time, the net operating working capital, total operating capital, etc. Then we're asked to create the construct the statement of retained earnings. And then there are some questions here that, uh, that we want to understand, we want to answer. Okay, so some of the questions here will be part of the questions in your long quiz next week. And then you have here ratios, okay. uh, some ratios, <clears throat> and I already wrote here the formula for your for your reference. Okay, and then you have here a Dupont analysis and Altman Z. So that's our goal for the next two sessions. So today we're going to start with the with the common size statement and horizontal analysis. Okay. When we talk of common size statement, uh, another name for this is uh, vertical analysis. <clears throat> so let me just uh, prepare my digital pen. <clears throat> okay, uh, have you encountered the common size statement before? Kindly chat guys, if in your previous accounting subject, you, <clears throat> you discussed this before, kindly chat yes or no, please. <coughs> Okay, all right, good, good. Thank you so much for your response. So this is an opportunity to learn, uh, for us to learn what a common size statement is. Now, as the name suggests, common size, okay? What we do with a common size statement is that we compare all the accounts to one common account. Okay, that's why it's called common size statement. <clears throat> and the uh, account that we're going to uh, use as a benchmark or, or as a, <clears throat> comparator okay, is uh, logically, and there's a reason for that, there's a reason why we use that, it's sales. Okay, So for example, if I am preparing the common size statement for 2021, <clears throat> I'm going to divide all the accounts here. <clears throat> In the income statement, I'm going to divide all the accounts by sales. So it's cost of goods over sales other expenses over sales, everything divided by sales, okay? So everything is expressed as a percentage in terms of sales. So whether it's in 2020 or 2019, everything, guys, is expressed in terms of sales, okay? So I, I want us to create one formula here, okay? One formula so that we can just copy this formula to the right and then down and still get, get the same answer. Okay, so everything is expressed in terms of sales. Let me just increase the. Okay, so it's equal to. <clears throat> so the first one will be sales. Okay, sales. And I'm going to divide it by sales. So it's sales over sales, cost of goods over sales, other expenses over sales, etc. <clears throat> everything expressed in terms of the sales of 2021, the sales of 2020, and the sales of 2019. Okay, so if I just use this formula, 
control enter and let's just uh, let's just um, put three decimal places to it okay and if i copy this formula to the right and down okay then <clears throat> i'll be getting this wrong answer okay because you notice that the formula is in this case c7 over c7 when we go here <clears throat> it's d8 over d8 when we go here <clears throat> it's e13 over e13 so this formula will not work class so what should we do in order to adjust the formula so that when i go to 2020 okay it will uh, uh, whether it's a cost of goods sold or other expenses it will be it will divide it will be divided by the sales of 2020 okay so how do we adjust this formula guys our goal is just one formula copy to the right copy down <clears throat> then that's it that will be our common size statement any suggestions yes let's see <clears throat> okay thank you joshua joshua could you explain your answer please um because um what i wrote was c4 divided by c dollar sign for dollar sign um, uh, okay. Uh, maybe what you mean is dollar C dollar four. Dollar C dollar four. Oh, uh, yung, <clears throat> something like that. Uh, 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 yung yung uh, yung dollar sa dulo. Uh, wala nang yun, ano? So uh, yeah. Okay. J Joshua is suggesting. Let me write that. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for your suggestion. Very good. Okay. So ang suggestion ni Joshua. Okay. So let me just uh, write that here. To use the formula. Okay, C4 over <clears throat> dollar C, dollar four. Okay, notice the dollar sign here. The dollar sign, okay, the uh, the position that, that follows the dollar sign, in this case C, and in this case four, uh, the dollar sign fixes that position. So Joshua is suggesting that when, when we do the formula, we fix column C and fix a row row four also so let's let's uh, do that so <clears throat> josh how did you type the dollar sign uh, sorry what what again sir how did you type the dollar sign did you ju just type it here this one uh, dollar and yes, then sir. dollar yes sir. okay thank you josh now if there's a correctly yeah there's a shortcut to that instead of typing dollar 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 because that can be time consuming instead of doing that notice guys it's quickly changing its position. Okay, notice it's very fast. No? I'm not typing. I'm, I'm not typing the dollar sign. What you do is, okay. There's a chat here. Yes, thank you, Joyce. Uh, thank you, Joyce. That's correct. We press F4. Okay, press F4. I'm pressing F4. Okay, so that changes the uh, cell position. I think in Mac. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, could you kindly check <clears throat> Mac users? I think it's Command T. Command T, could you kindly check that? Command and then T. Uh, any Mac users? Could you please give uh, feedback if it's correct? By pressing Command T, <clears throat> you're able to change the positions. Okay, thank you, Harold. Okay. So command D for, for Mac. Okay. Now take note, guys, if I highlight everything, oops, then also the denominator changes. It also, the denominator also changes its position. <clears throat> but we don't want that. What we want only is the is the uh, uh, denominator okay, to change its position. Okay, so this was the suggestion. C for C dollar for. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> so if we copy the formula, okay, now let's see what happened to our formula. <clears throat> let's take a look at this. Okay, I'm looking at total operating costs for 2020, and the formula is D8 over <clears throat> dollar C dollar four. True enough, guys, the, uh, the denominator did not change positions because you're, fish, you're fixing the column and the row, both the columns and the row. 
if you fix both the columns and the row, then you're actually fixing that specific cell. That specific cell. Okay? So, however, is this the formula that we want, guys? Comment, please. Is this the ratio that we want? Or let's take a look at this one. So, this is interest expense divided by interest expense of 2019 divided by sales of 2021. Is that what we want, guys? Comment, please, in the chat box. Is that the formula that we want? Clash. Is that the correct formula? Hello? This one, guys. This is other expenses divided by sales of 2021. Is that the formula that we want? Okay. Yes, Charmaine. What what what's the formula that you want? Moment, guys. Huh? Um, sir, sales po divided by the um other expenses po or COGS po. Uh, hold on. just a minute, as Nilang. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> yes, Charmaine, sorry. Um, sir, ano po, uh, sales po divided by the um other ano po, um other expenses, depreciation, um the others po. Ah, sales yung numerator. Ah, po, sales po yung nauna po, sir. Okay, uh, here you're referring to. Okay, you're saying that it should be sales first divided by the... the... Yes, sir. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thank you, Charmaine, but uh, it's not the case. It should be the account divided by the sales. Kasi ang gusto natin makuha, what we want is, for example, let's take a look at this. It's cost of goods sold divided by sales. It means that for every one peso, kasi... Okay, so let me just write that. So what does this 0.824 mean? 0.824, okay, over 1. Okay, that 0.824 actually has an over 1 here, di ba? Divided by 1 yan. No? Anong ibig sabihin yan? What does that mean? For every 1 peso of sale, the company had a cost of goods of 82 centavos. Ibig sabihin, sa bawat nabenta natin na piso, yung cost nun, yung cost ng goods nun, 82 centavos. Okay, and not the other way around. Okay, so tama na ang numerator natin, yung all the accounts divided by sales. Kasi nga, we're benchmarking it against sales. For example, ito. This one. Itong 0 0.036. What does this mean? This is 0 0.036 divided by 1. May denominator yan, yung 1. What's the denominator? Yung sales. So, what's the implication of this? For every one peso of sales, the company is earning 3 centavos, 3.6 centavos. Okay? So, sa bawat piso na nabenta natin, ang kita natin doon, 3.6. So, tama yung guys, ang numerator yung sales natin kasi we, we want to benchmark it over sales, no? not sales over the account. Okay? So, the uh, order of the formula, account divided by sales is correct. However, guys, okay, let, let me go back to my question. Take a look at this. So what's, what's this? E9 divided by C4. You know, E9 divided by C4. <clears throat> so uh, what are we, what are we uh, uh, inferring here? What's wrong with this formula, guys? Anyone, please? What's wrong with that formula? Sir, I think it's uh, not the same year. Oh, yes. So what should it be, Josh? Um, it should be instead of 2021 sales, it's supposed to be 2019. Yes, correct. Yeah, thank you, Josh. That's correct. Because you, we want to compute for the uh, uh, common size on a yearly basis. Because it's not, it's, there's no sense, guys. It doesn't make sense to, okay, 
to compare your EBIT with the sales of EBIT of 2019 to the to the sales of 2021. Okay. The income statement is an annual performance. It's a yearly performance in this case because it's a, it's a yearly data. So we would like to see how much was EBIT, uh, how much EBIT was the company generating for every peso of sales for 2019. Okay, so it's a uh, year bound. Okay, dito kasi ang ginawa natin sa formula natin, what we did was to compare your EBIT with the sales of EBIT of 2019 with the EBIT sales of 2021. It doesn't make sense. So how do we now change this formula? Okay, before we answer that, guys, take a look at the four possible positions. Dollar C, dollar four fixes both the column C and the row four. When you do this, guys, so that means this is absolutely fixed in that specific cell. Okay, if we take a look at our, our, our formula, dollar C, dollar four here indicates that when we copy this formula to the right, to down, the denominator dollar C dollar four will not change. Okay, it will be fixed at 2021. Okay, now the other cell references are C four means uh, if you copy the formula, it both the column and the row will change because nothing is fixed here. Okay, whatever follows the dollar sign, that's the one that's fixed. When we have dollar C four, we're fixing the the, the uh, column C and not the row. On the other hand, C dollar four means you're fixing the row, but not the column. Okay, so we he, here we said that we say that this formula is wrong. Okay, we do not fix both the row and the column. What if we fix only? How about this, guys? Dollar C four. What does that mean? Dollar C four means that we're fixing the column. Okay, so anywhere we copy the formula, your column C will not change. So it will go to. Uh, it will go to different rows, but the same column. Okay, it will not go to different. It will not go to different uh, different uh, uh, columns. Okay, so if you try this, C four divided by dollar C four. Let's try this. Okay, then let's see if this is correct. Okay. So this is D7, dollar C7. Is this the correct formula, guys? Please chat yes or no. Yes or no, please. I'll, I'm waiting for the others to respond. Is that the correct formula? Remember, our objective is to divide everything by sales, okay? Here, are we dividing by sales? Okay, more responses, please. And this formula, are we dividing by sales? Is that the correct formula? Okay. okay let's wait for the others to respond. Let's give your classmates a few more seconds to respond. The question is, is that the correct formula? Knowing that in your common size statement, you want to get the percentage, the proportion of your individual accounts to the sales. A few more seconds, guys. I hope uh, we get uh, a big chunk of you responding to the uh, questions. Any more, guys? I'm still missing 11. 11 students have not responded yet. Okay, so thank you. Most of you have responded, but I hope next time I'm going, we'll have, uh, we'll have 100% participation. Okay, the answer is no. You're correct, guys. No. Okay, what do we need, guys? What do we need? 
we need all the accounts here to be to be divided by their corresponding sales. For example, total operating cost of 2021 divided by the sales of 2021. EBIT of 2019 divided by the sales of 2019. Other expenses of 2020 divided by the other expenses of 2020. That's what we want, guys. And we're not getting the correct answer here. Okay. If you check this, guys, it's E8 divided by <clears throat> C8 because we fixed the column. Okay. So what happened was Excel, when we copied the formula to all the cells, Excel did not move its column position. It was only column C. It moved the row position. Okay. So what should this be, guys? What should our formula be? What should be our denominator? We want the sales to, to uh, we want the denominator to be always with sales. So where are our sales, guys? Where are our sales? So how do we change the formula, class? You may unmute yourself or you may chat your answer in the chat box. So what should be our formula there? Okay, let me see. Okay, Anton, yes. Could you kindly explain your answer? So uh, for the dollar uh, sign, it would lock the, the cell with the row, not okay. the column. <clears throat> yes, correct. Thank you, Anton. You're correct. <clears throat> so I'll press another F4, F4, F4. <clears throat> so we should be locking the, the row, guys, row four, okay? Because when we copy the formula, we want the uh, cells to move along this row because that's where our cells are located, okay? So if we use this formula, control enter, and then I'm going to copy this to the right, okay? And then down, okay. Now what do we have here? Let's check. Okay, so it's D5 divided by D$4. So anywhere you go here, guys, you notice now that we have the correct formula because we're now dividing by the sales of each particular year. There, C11 over C$4. Okay? Let me just delete this. Uh, okay. So let's... So this is now the correct answer. Let's... Uh, I'll, I'll uh, format this a bit. And then uh, it's best, guys, for you to, to also for, follow the format of your income statement as far as the, let's say, the, uh, okay, this one, oops, the borders, double, okay. Uh, let's put also a, a bottom border in sales. Okay. So let's take a look at our common size statement, okay? Now, <clears throat> as you uh, know by now, guys, uh, we compute not because uh, we're interested in computing. We, we compute because we want to analyze the performance of the firm. So what, does, what do these figures reflect? These figures tell a story about the performance of the firm, okay? So let's take a look, for example, as cost of goods ratio. In 2019, the company was spending 83 centavos per every peso of sales. Okay. However, in 2020, it ballooned up to 85.4. So operations in 2020 was quite more expensive compared to 2019. And then it went down to 82.4. So we can say that relative to 2020 and 2019, the performance of the firm was more efficient in 2021 because for every peso of sales, they were just spending 82.4 centavos. Okay. Now, uh, then we go to the other accounts. That's how, that's what we do with this. No? So other expenses in 2019, it was almost 10 centavos. For 2020, it was 12.3 centavos. And then for 2021, it was around uh, 8.7 centavos for every peso of sales. It seems that 2020 uh, had the uh, greater operating cost, no? Because 12.3 centavos yung other expenses nila. In 2020, it was only 8.7. Okay. In fact, if we take a look at the total operating cost, 
for every peso of sales in 2019, the company was spending nine, 90, around 94 centavos. For 2020, it was almost one, okay? Almost one, which means that either, uh, either the company uh, is pricing its goods wrongly, okay? Kasi ang natitira na lang, halos uh, wala na eh, guys. Eh. Nine, almost uh, 99.7 centavos, that's almost one peso. So ibig sabihin, the peso of sale all goes to cost. Wala nang profit. While in 2021, the company recovered a bit uh, for every peso of sales. Uh, it was costing them around 93 centavos. Okay? And then looking at the uh, operating profit here, Okay, because of the very high total operating cost, okay, so na lang guys, no? not even one centavo for operating profit. It, it was just 0.3 cents. Okay, while in 2021, it was seven, cent, cent, 7 cents. Okay, or put it another way, for every 100 peso sales, the company in 2021 was earning 7 pesos. While here, for every 100 peso sales in 2020, the company was only earning how much? For every 100 pesos sales, it was only earning 0.3 or 3 centavos or 0.3 centavos, not even, not even 1 centavo in 2020. While it earned 6 centavos, or sorry, let me put it in pesos. This is uh, in 2020, it was 0.3 pesos, or that's roughly 3, 3 centavos. For 2019, it was 6 pesos for every 100 pesos sales. So that's the story, guys, behind the operating performance of the firm in terms of the income statement. And that's all because of the very high cost of goods sold ratio and then the other expenses ratio. <clears throat> now take a look at the bottom line now, the net income. You see in 2019, the company was able to generate profit of around 2.6 centavos. It was higher in 2021, 3.6 centavos. But the company was losing okay, by 1.6 centavos for every peso of sales. In other words, for every one peso of sale that the company had, they were spending uh, around one peso and 16 centavos. Okay? One, one peso, yeah, 1.16 centavos. Okay? The costs were greater than the... Uh, uh, than the <clears throat> sales so that's why there there was net loss as far as 2020 is concerned okay so this is this is the beauty of the common size statement it allows us to easily compare because if we it's difficult to compare it with the absolute figures here you'll say that yes sales was increasing but uh and here cost of goods sold was increasing but it's difficult now to see the proportion of the cost of goods sold over your sales. Okay. That can be addressed by the common size statement because you see here the proportion 82 centavos of cost for every one peso of sales. Okay. In fact, guys, uh, what, there's a one visual way, visual way to present this. Kindly uh, chat, guys, if you have used spark lines in Excel before. Have you used spark lines? Kindly chat, please. Okay, Anton, yes. How about the rest? Charmaine, no, thank you. Okay, all right. So I guess most of you have not used the spark lines. Okay, so let me let me teach you how to uh, prepare spark lines. You use it, especially when you have quantitative data over time, across time. And this is a good example. We have here our sales figure over time. So we can construct a, uh, a spark line using this data. So let's put our spark line. Let's let's do a spark line for both absolute figures and the common size statement. Let's start first with the absolute figures. So how do you construct a spark lines? Just highlight the cell <coughs> where you want this, the spark lines to be positioned. So I'm I'm putting it here. Okay, and then we we uh, okay, and then insert. Under the tab insert, you have here spark lines. And then there are three types of spark lines. In Excel, you have the line, you have the column, and the win, win loss. So let's just use the column. Okay, column. Okay, so the location range of your spark line will be 
the one that we highlighted, F4 to F13. And the data that we'd, we'd like Excel to do a spark line on are the corresponding data here, there. Okay. So, okay, there we go. Okay, so you can he see here <clears throat> the spark lines. So let's just highlight this. Okay, and then we can <clears throat> we can modify this. <clears throat> okay, design. Okay, if you want, uh, there are negative points here. You can click here the negative or the high points or low points. You can do that. Okay, so let's just uh, let me use the high point. <clears throat> okay, or you can use the negative points. So let's just uh, <clears throat> first use the high points. <clears throat> okay, so the red ones here are the highest points <clears throat> in the series. Okay, just take note that when you interpret this, it should be this is 2019, 2020, and 2021. Okay, so you find here that the highest uh, sale, sales was in 2021. The highest cost of goods sold was also in 2021. However, the highest <clears throat> other expenses was in 2020. Okay, so interest expense was highest <clears throat> in 2020. So there are some highest points in 2020. Okay, that's, that's troubling, guys, because uh, other expenses highest in 2020 and yet your sales was not enough in order to cover these other expenses that's why you we had we had the net loss okay if we if we change the uh, the highlight negative points okay <clears throat> you can see here that earnings before tax in 2020 okay it's negative which means uh, the red one here refers to negative Okay, and then the net income is also negative here. <clears throat> okay, so this tells us, guys, the story of the performance of, of XYZ company. Okay, now, <clears throat> as regards interest, for example, there was a big jump in, uh, in interest expense. What could this be attribute, attributed to? Now, we can look at that. We can take a look at the balance sheet. What happened to, what's the cost of interest expense? <clears throat> interest expense can be caused by, okay, here we have notes payable, okay? So from 200,000, it jumped to 720. That was a big jump as far as the interest bearing notes payable is concerned. Also long-term debt, guys, take a look at this. From 323 up to 1 million, okay? The, that's where the uh, increase in notes payable was uh, uh, where it coming from, uh, increasing the interest. Okay, so what could have uh, led the company to uh, to borrow more? Okay, that can be seen. Uh, <clears throat> okay, take a look at the net fixed assets. There was a huge investment as far as fixed asset is concerned. Okay, from 344 to 939. So that could have uh, been the cause of the uh, increase in, in the uh, in the debt <clears throat> and the increase in the debt resulted into a high increase in interest expense okay so for uh, xyz company for every one peso of sales they had in 2019 they had 1.8 centavos of interest expense it jumped to 33 centavos per peso of sales and then uh, again back to a low 1.1 centavos in 2020 <clears throat> 2021 so you can see here that 2020 seems to be a challenging year for the company. Okay, now let's also prepare the, uh, the let's insert, let's insert a, okay, we can use, this time let's use a line plot. Okay, what happened? Okay, let me repeat, insert. <laughs> data range is this one. Okay, then maybe we can highest points. <clears throat> okay. 
So here, <clears throat> just take note that this is uh, from 2021 to 2020, 2019. <clears throat> you can see here that the cost of goods sold was really highest during 2020 there. Cost of goods sold, other expenses and depreciation. So the total operating cost was highest also in 2020. Okay, the highest EBIT was in 2021. <clears throat> okay, as far as the cost, uh, the uh, uh, ratios are concerned. Okay, so this also gives us a glimpse of <clears throat> uh, the highest, uh, in terms of vertical analysis, the highest common size statement. Okay, which is quite similar to this one. Okay, so both the uh, common size statement, the spark lines and uh, the spark lines for the absolute figures and the spark lines for the common size statement do tell a story. <clears throat> so it's uh, important for a uh, management to, to go deeper and analyze this. Okay, if you notice guys, what we were doing was benchmarking against time. Okay, if you recall, <clears throat> it's not enough that we just take a look at these ratios in, at face value, we have to dig deeper. We have to benchmark, and uh, it should be benchmarking against. Where should we benchmark, guys? Where should we, we be benchmarking? Okay, should be benchmarking against. What do you call class? Benchmarking against <clears throat> anyone? Where should we be benchmarking against time and against the competitor? <clears throat> okay, so these things benchmarking against time and benchmark against competitor. All right, <clears throat> so. Uh, we should not just stop at looking at these ratios and at, in these uh, spark lines. It's imperative that a company benchmark against their direct competitor. Okay, note that I said direct competitor. I'm not saying that uh, it's it's uh, utter nonsense, guys, for Jollibee to be comparing itself with Burger Machine. Okay, that won't do because they. <clears throat> Uh, there will be no value added to Jollibee by comparing itself with a much lesser, lesser uh, player in the industry. <clears throat> okay, so uh, say uh, companies do benchmarking, but they benchmark usually benchmark up, which means they compare themselves with companies that are better performers than them. Okay, if the company is number one in the industry, then it can can compare itself with the second and compare itself with the global player okay so because that will that will uh, be uh, more value added to them okay so let's now go to horizontal analysis okay so we have done the common size statement vertical analysis for the horizontal analysis what we do here <clears throat> is we get the growth rate so for example by how much did sales grow from 2020 to 2021 Okay. By how much did sales grow from 2019 to 2020? So that's what we do by horizontal. It's called horizontal analysis because we go row-wise. This is vertical because we go vertically. Okay, We compare each of the accounts by the corresponding sales of that specific year. Okay, So that's, that's vertical and this is horizontal. So the formula for this one is equal to the current value divided by the previous value minus one. Okay, so if you recall, that's how we get the growth rate per year. So let's modify this and then let's make it into percent and maybe just one decimal place. Okay, I'll bold this and then copy to the right, copy below, okay, and then put the uh, formatting top and bottom border so that we can uh, we can easily to guide us in the interpretation
Okay. So this is our horizontal analysis, guys. Horizontal analysis. Okay. So uh, some would call this year-on-year -year analysis. Okay. Because we're looking at the growth rate of uh, the two periods. Okay. So there was a great increase in sales in uh, between 2019 and 2020. That's good, 70%. In fact, the sales from 2020 to 2021 uh, was lower, only 20.6, compared to the sales increase between 2019 and 2020. However, guys, if we take a look at the uh, cost of goods sold, okay, 73.9% increase, okay, in cost of goods sold. Now, that was not, uh, this increase in sales was not uh, at par with the increase in cost. Okay, ito nag-increase yung sales ng 70%. Yung cost naman nag-increase ng 73. Okay, on the other hand, for 2029, 2020, and 2021, although sales increased only by 20.6, no, the, the cost of goods sold increased just by 16.5. So, uh, uh, in relation to the increase in sales, 2021-2020 period was a lot better compared to the other period. It was 70 and 73. Uh, the increase in cost of goods sold was way higher than the increase in sales. For 21-20, it was it's better. Okay. In fact, the other expenses here increased by uh, 100%. No? Like double, like double yung, ano, yung uh, other expenses from 340 naging 720. While for 21, okay, there was a, a decrease even, negative 14.9% decrease. So in, the, in your horizontal analysis, a positive figure here means an increase in the value uh, from the previous period. A negative, a negative figure here means there was a decrease compared to the previous period. So negative 14.9% here means there was a decrease from 2020 to 2021. From 720 to 612. Okay? <clears throat> so, total operating cost, ang laka ng increase, ano? 80.5 ito, 12.3. Here you can see that overall, operating cost in 2020 increased by 80.5%, while sales only increased by 70%. So, you'll really have problem with that. See, 2021-2020 figure, guys, 12.3% increase in total operating cost and sales increased by 20.6%. Okay, now <clears throat> we'll have a problem in the horizontal analysis. There can be one ticklish problem. What is ticklish problem? Na yon? Okay, if you take a look at this, ito, this one. Now, if we take a look at these figures, okay, diba ito negative 158 to 422, okay, tapos negative 366.5%. What's wrong with that? Can you see anything wrong with that negative 366.5? But take note, guys, a negative, a negative uh, rate means okay, there was a decrease in the value. So what's wrong with, with, with these guys? Anyone? What's wrong with this <clears throat> negative 366.5? Any comment about that? Anyone, please? <clears throat> okay, you see, based on what we said a while ago, a positive growth rate means the, the value increased. <clears throat> a negative growth rate means the value decreased. Like it was 720 to 612, there was a decrease. It was 20.6% positive, it means that the sales increased by. Uh, there was a growth, 5.8 million to 7 point something million. 
Okay, so guys, ano? Okay, thank you, Charmaine. Uh, could you elaborate further, Charmaine? Um, sir, disregarding the parenthesis po in column D, um, I think there was an increase po from 2019 to 2021 po. Okay. Thank you, Charmaine. But not even disregarding. <clears throat> Kasi ito negative to eh, di ba? Negative 158. Negative 158, naging 422 siya, positive. So was there an increase or decrease? There was an increase. <clears throat> In fact, malaking increase nga. If we dis disregard the uh, parenthesis here, which means positive 158 though, mas maliit lang yung increase na yun. <clears throat> okay, this is negative 158, naging 422. That was a huge increase, guys. And then here, we're having here a negative, negative value, negative growth rate, which means bumaba daw yung value, which is wrong. Okay? Here also, guys. <clears throat> and here also. So, <clears throat> Take note, guys, that when you have, when the previous value is negative, <clears throat> okay, then you'll have a problem with your horizontal analysis. So I want you guys as an exercise to determine how should this formula be adjusted so that when you have <clears throat> negative previous values, okay, then <clears throat> you still have the, same, the correct year-on-year uh, -year figure, okay? So I'll leave that to you guys, and then uh, we'll compare this uh, <clears throat> on, yeah, on Thursday, guys. We'll compare our answers. So um, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to adjust this formula. One formula, then copy to, copy, copy to all the cells so that this will be correct. Because this is not correct, guys. This is not correct. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so let's go, now go to your balance sheet. For your balance sheet, okay, <clears throat> when you prepare the common size statement, it's everything divided by your total assets. <clears throat> okay, so same formula, guys. We fix the total assets. Control enter. Then let's uh, format this. And then just three decimal places. Okay, then copy. Then let's once again format this. Okay, format your common size statement to make it appear as if it's uh, <clears throat> it's an income statement also. Okay, only that the figures are percentages, proportions with respect to for the balance sheet with respect to the total assets. Same thing with the liabilities and equity. So your accounts divided by can be total liabilities and equity or total assets. Anyway, they're the same. And again, fix the uh, Row, okay, and <clears throat> let me just make it three decimal places. Okay, so this one we're going to put borders here, top and bottom. <clears throat> Oops, wrong. Should be here. Uh, okay, class, uh, I think I, <clears throat> yeah, I think we're missing <clears throat> an element here. Kindly, I'm sorry about this, kindly insert here uh, after long-term debt. Uh, sorry, I forgot to uh, put here total liabilities. We don't have total liabilities. Okay, so total liabilities. Oops, control Z. For total liabilities, we just need to sum up our current and our long term. <clears throat> All right. And you can just copy this down also. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds, guys, to work on your uh, worksheet. 
And when you're done, guys, when you're done doing the formulas here, okay, kind of chat. Sama na rin natin to, guys. Yung horizontal analysis natin. <clears throat> and this will be equal to the current divided by the previous minus one. And then let's... Uh, percentage one decimal place and then we bold this and then copy to the right copy down Okay, so let me give you a few seconds, guys. When you're done with the common size statement for the balance sheet and also the horizontal analysis, kindly uh, respond, please, in the chat box. I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, guys, I see your responses. If you were able to compute for the common size statement and the horizontal analysis for the balance sheet, kindly chat in the chat box, please, if you're done. Feel free to ask questions if you're, uh, if you're having problems. Sir, um, yes. In in the in the Excel file that you gave us, okay. Um, your Excel file has total liabilities in cell B thirty two. Our I I added this. I I showed the class now. I to, to just add this. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, Never mind. In add natin to guys ah, tung total liabilities. I demonstrated a while ago. I said that the file that I sent you did not have total liabilities, so uh, kindly insert a row no? and then total liabilities. Ina add lang naman to. Just add your total current liabilities and your long term debt.
Okay, how are you? <clears throat> How's your common size statement, guys? Kindly chat, please, if you're done. <clears throat> Were you able to follow along <clears throat> and uh, compute for the common size statement? <clears throat> so far, uh, okay, thank you. So far, only three, four. Okay, so <clears throat> only a small percent of the class has already completed their common size statement. I hope to get the responses of the other students. The rest, guys, <clears throat> were you able to complete your common size statement and your horizontal analysis? <clears throat> if, you have, if you have questions, if you, <clears throat> if you weren't able to follow and uh, you want clarification, kindly, <clears throat> yes, if you may ask, guys. <clears throat> Okay, so I think we have, uh, I only saw around six or seven responses. How about the others, guys? Let's give your classmates a few more seconds. Okay, I hope the others are will also uh, do their worksheets. <clears throat> now let's let's have a brief interpretation of this. So, what about the uh, common size statement for the balance sheet? <clears throat> Here we can see, guys, the changes you know, as far as the <clears throat> proportion of the of the balance sheet accounts to the total assets. Uh, for example, if you take a look at the accounts receivable, okay. <clears throat> So uh, there were slight changes, 23%, 23 centavos per test of total assets, 21.9 and 25. We can see here that the greatest uh, uh, proportion of the receivables was in 2021. Okay, why don't we, okay, I'm sorry, why don't we uh, insert here a column chart? Sparkline. <clears throat> okay, so, so all right. <clears throat> so we can see here, guys, that consistent in terms of assets, uh, 2021 had the highest. Uh, assets in terms of inventories, AR, short-term investments. However, in terms of net fixed assets, 2020 had the highest okay, in terms of net fixed assets. <clears throat> so in fact, uh, 344, 939, there was a 172% a, uh, increase. Okay, 172%, almost double, almost two times. And then it went down to by 11% in 2020. So the composition of the assets for, uh, for inventories, not, well, it, uh, inventories uh, accounted for 
more or less around 45, 46, 48 percent of the total assets of the firm. Okay, while fixed, while property, plant, and equipment accounted for around 20 percent, more than 20 percent, highest in 2020, 32 percent. Okay, so you can see here the uh, how the assets are the nature of the asset investment of the firm. Okay, what's uh, different is that in 2020, there was a huge uh, increase in the proportion of fixed assets. Okay, in fact, it increased by 172%. <clears throat> okay, and uh, it decreased by 11% in 2021. Okay, when we take a look at the uh, financing, guys, okay, let's take a look at the, <clears throat> okay, let's also do the, Let's also do the um, spark line here, column. And then maybe let's uh, do the high point here. <clears throat> okay. All right, we can see here the red points here are the uh, highest points. So notes payable was highest really in 2020, and so is uh, uh, long-term debt and total liabilities. There was there were there was more, much more liabilities in 2020 compared to 2021. In fact, if we take a look at the ratio, debt ratio, okay, 54% in 2019. Then there was a huge increase in 2020, 80%, very highly leveraged no? in 2020. And then it went down to 44% in 2021. Okay. Uh, in terms of equity, guys, 45% in 2019, 19% in 2020. Okay. Because of the huge increase in debt. And then the, there was a jump in 2021. Uh, what, what caused this, guys? What caused this increase in the equity ratio? If you can look at this one, guys, uh, common stock 460, 460. And then there was capital infusion by the shareholders. Okay, dito nang galing yan, no? Twice, 2.6 times, guys, increase in common equity. Uh, no increase between 2019 and 2020, but between 2020 and 2021, 2.6 times increase in your common equity. While on the other hand, <clears throat> the increase in debt was uh, seen in here in 2020 to 2019, two times increase in your long-term debt, okay? And then there, it decreased in 20, <clears throat> 2021. Okay, <clears throat> so th that's, uh, that's uh, <clears throat> what we can see about how the assets of the company are, uh, what's the composition of the investment in assets in the company and how they're financed just by looking at the balance sheet. Okay, we have uh, around 16 minutes, guys, to compute for this, okay, we want to reach, uh, if we can reach up to MVA, so that we will be at par with the other sections. Okay, so here we're asked to compute for net operating working capital, TOC, net investment. We did this last time, guys. So let's, uh, just by way of review, guys, <clears throat> let's write, write the formula here for OCA, it's your operating current assets minus operating current liabilities. Right? For TOC, it's your NOWC plus your net its assets. Okay. So let's first compute for the net operating working capital. We need this in order to compute for the net investment, in order to compute for the ROIC, etc. Our net operating working capital is, let's take a look at the balance sheet. It's the sum. What are our operating current assets? <clears throat> what are our operating current assets, guys? It's cash, okay? And then we don't include short-term investments. We just include AR, receivables and inventories, okay? So that's our operating current assets. And then we have to subtract what are our operating current liabilities. In the liability section, we have, so we have the sum of accounts payable <clears throat> and we don't include notes payable because it's interest bearing. We only include approvals and accounts payable. 
Okay, so that's our formula. Come enter. Okay, so that's our operating current assets minus operating current liabilities or NOWC net operating working capital for 2021. And then we copy this to the right. Okay, so these are our net operating working capital also. Okay, then to compute for the uh, <clears throat> TOC, we have your NOWC plus. We have to use the net fixed assets. Okay, so that's the only one given. If we were, we were given also the uh, <clears throat> at cost, fixed asset at cost, you have to use the net fixed assets. Okay, so we now have our <clears throat> total operating capital. So this is the capital provided to management. Ito yung operating capital na binigay sa kanila. Okay, and then the net investment, how much was, uh, how much TOC was invested? Okay, how much <clears throat> TOC, total operating capital, was added in 2021? So it's just a difference between the ending of TOC in 2021 and minus its beginning. Okay. And then we copy this to the right. Okay. And we don't have for 2019 because we don't have the 2018 figures. So what's the formula for NOPAT, guys? Anyone? What is, what's our formula for net operating profit after tax? <clears throat> and one please net operating profit after tax Anyone, please? <clears throat> Hello, guys. Are you still there? <clears throat> Can anyone please uh, share the formula for your notepad, net operating profit after tax? <clears throat> Hello, guys. <clears throat> okay, we have discussed this <clears throat> already several times. So, guys, I, I, I will assume that you know how to compute for that. Okay. I'll just... Uh, Okay, so this is our <clears throat> no path. Right. <clears throat> uh, we're given that the tax rate is 40%. Let's extend this year so that we can compute for the no path in 2019. <clears throat> okay. So that's our net operating <coughs> profit after tax. Okay, we see here, guys, that uh, the there was a huge uh, additional investment in 2020, <clears throat> 1.1 million, compared to 2021, only uh, almost half a million. However, despite the uh, increase in investment in TOC, the no path only increased by 10.464 in 20. 20. So we can now compute for the free cash flow. Okay, it's your uh, no path minus your uh, investment in TOC. Okay, so here you have negative figures. And we said before that uh, free cash flow, a negative free cash flow does not necessarily mean <clears throat> bad performance for the firm. <clears throat> negative, guys. 
<clears throat> for 2020, uh, negative was largely caused by the huge investment in total operating capital, which is good. However, there is a bad side to it in the sense that the NOPAT was only very small. Okay, despite the in net investment in TOC, the NOPAT of 2020 was net operating profit was uh, very small compared to 2021, although there was only fewer, a smaller uh, additional operating capital, yet the company was able to generate a, a larger operating profit. Okay, so the uh, quality of the free cash flow, <clears throat> uh, both negative in 2020 and 2021, but we noticed that it was a lower negative in 2020, uh, primarily because of the higher, uh, higher operating profit after tax generated in 2020. Okay, ROIC, guys. What's ROIC? Uh, that's to determine if the firm was able to, to create value. Anyone? What's our ROIC? Uh, how I wish, guys, that there was some more participation from your end. Okay, sometimes we get stuck because uh, <clears throat> if I ask questions, uh, I'm not sure if you're able to listen or because it takes uh, uh, quite some time, guys, for you to respond. Okay, anyone would like to answer, guys? Because we already did this before, guys. So ROIC. <clears throat> how do we compute for ROIC? <clears throat> Okay, so thank you, Anton. So it's no path divided by the beginning capital. Okay, remember the story behind this. In 2021, the company was able to generate operating profit of 301.584. Okay, but we said that this was generated because uh, the manage the company was provided to them operating capital. Okay, how much operating capital? We use the beginning operating capital. Okay, because the uh, operating profit uh, start was uh, start was uh, generated beginning with the January one. Okay, so that's why we are basing it on the beginning capital. Okay, and then let's convert this into percentage, and then we can copy this. <clears throat> okay, now the question was value uh, created or destroyed. Was value created or destroyed for the firm? Anyone would like to answer that, guys? Did management create value or destroy value for the shareholders? Okay, Anton, by the way, please. Uh, okay, my answer na pala dito, no? Migs and Anton, please remind me that you get plus two points for your short quiz number one. Remind you na lang ako para dadagdagan natin ng, <clears throat> ng two points each kayo, ha? Sa short quiz number one. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> was value created or destroyed for shareholders based on the ROIC? Answer is value was created in 2021 because the ROIC was higher than the WAC. Ito kasi yung basis natin, di ba? 10% yung basis natin. And ROIC, return on invested capital, 13.4% is higher than WAC. And then this one naman, 0.9, much, much lower than WAC. So in 2021, value was created. In 2020, value was destroyed. <clears throat> okay. So let's now compute for the uh, MVA. Okay. MVA is simply, we know that, guys, simply equal to the stock price multiplied by the uh, number of shares. This is your market capitalization. And then we compare it. With, we subtract the uh, total equity, the book value. Okay, 
So market value added for 2021 positive. So this is okay. And we can just copy this formula. Okay. So in terms of market value added, guys, okay naman, no? Uh, in both years, <clears throat> market value was added to the firm. Only that, medyo mas mababa talaga yung 2020. Okay. And lastly, guys, ROIC, okay, EVA using ROIC. How do we compute for the uh, uh, EVA guys using ROIC? Anyone? What's the formula? Okay, so this is equal to how much return was generated compared that with the weighted average cost of capital. And then multiply that by the uh, beginning capital. Okay, so we have here EVA is negative, and that that uh, that's consistent with the ROIC. Okay, value was destroyed in 2021. Now for no path using no path. Okay. How do we compute for the EVA using MOPAT? <clears throat> Anyone, guys? It's your profit generated minus the minus what? <clears throat> Minus the POC. Okay, how much capital was provided to the company at the beginning? And then this is not free, it has a cost. Okay. Okay, so you should be getting the same answer, guys, using both, uh, using both NOPAT and UROIC. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, notice, guys, that I'm not, I'm, I'm not anymore uh, uh, discussing this uh, slowly because we have already discussed this. I assume that you're very responsible students, guys. So you have already uh, at your disposal the notes to this. So just kindly review this if you're <clears throat> if you're having uh, some problems, or you can you can chat me uh, for clarifications. Okay, so that ends our discussion for today. The next meeting, we're going to go here. Uh, do kindly uh, read on ratio analysis. These are the different types of ratios. We have liquidity, asset management ratio, debt ratio, profitability ratios, and market value ratios. These are important ratios, uh, which we use in order to assess the performance of the firm. So our goal next meeting is uh, to finish this. Okay, most probably we'll not be able to finish everything. So it will be carried over to Tuesday next week. And then we'll have our long quiz on Thursday next week. Okay, so let me stop recording.